and I'm glad to introduce you to my work that I'm doing for the, my internship and because. Uh, so the development of this tool to assist the programmer while designing secure code. I will work with you through uh, an introduction of the ladder and secure projects that are the context of my work. And then uh, talking about the information leakage that is mainly the concern of the ladder project. And uh, the, the, the reason of our choice of, uh, to work with a compiler that is uh, the main concern of the secure project. And then I describe you the tool that I'm uh, developing, the bit slicer, and the future development of the secure project itself. So, yeah. um, the other project that is run by the, um, the cryptography research group of the University of Bristol uh, is focused on studying the information leakage of the, of the digital devices, uh, devices such as, uh, the <clears throat> uh, such as smart cards or uh, uh, you know, smartphones, so, uh, so devices we use every day, uh, against uh, uh, a quite sophisticated kind of attack, that is the uh, so-called side channel attacks, the a term that you may be familiar with, uh, that are uh, attacks, sorry for that, um, attacks that uh, um, don't rely on uh, weaknesses of the algorithm used to encrypt the data, but uh, rely more on uh, uh, intrinsic uh, characteristics or features of the devices, such as physical characteristics such as uh, the power consumption, the time and behavior of the program that encrypts the data, and uh, also electromagnetic emissions and also even sound emission of the devices. So what is the, the concern of this project? Uh, is that uh, um, in order to test uh, a new device or a new implementation of new algorithms against these kind of threats, you need a well-equipped lab and also some expertise in the field. For instance, some, uh, someone who can design a proper test or uh, and run it, of course, to, to be sure that the implementation is strong against this kind of, of, of threats. And so the, uh, the project, the lab project, aims at uh, um, delivering and making available this, uh, the power of uh, the, um, of a uh, or well equipped lab uh, and expertise to uh, any programmer who's uh, trying to develop this kind of code uh, without uh, the need from the, from the programmer to, uh, of a specific knowledge uh, <clears throat> about the subject. And the secure project is that it is uh, quite uh, young since it uh, started at the beginning of July, is more focused on the development of tools for the compiler, in our case LLVM and GCC, that uh, basically do um, the same thing, such as that is uh, support uh, and well, help the, the programmer with uh, the implementation of, uh, of secure code. So what uh, do we mean when we talk about information leakage? Uh, we are talking about, as I said, digital devices, as was seen before, and this kind of, um, of, of threats, so attacks that address uh, this um, intrinsic characteristic of the, of the devices. And to give you an example, just to understand better, um, this is an example taken from a crypto library, uh, the Polar SSL library, but uh, don't worry, it has been fixed uh, uh, a lot of time ago. It's quite an old commit. Uh, anyway, um, you can see in the first line the, uh, the pointer that is going to address the, the buff uh, variable. And the buff variable contains some secret information, but then uh, they're using the, uh, the pointer p in a, in a condition of, the, of an f of an e statement that uh, oh, once the condition is satisfied, will make the function return a value. So here, this is an example of a side channel introduced by uh, a, a bad practice uh, that is by using uh, a variable that is related to secret data to control the flow of the, 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 uh, the execution flow. And this could give a clue to a proper tool well designed to uh, measure this kind of, uh, well, the differences in an execution time to understand what is the content of uh, 
of buff in this case. So what are the secret data that uh, they are processing at the moment? So why uh, are we working with the compiler? Um, first of all, as we all know, uh, compiler are uh, already well tested and designed tools to um, to uh, analyze uh, analyze the code because they when go, they go through almost each line of the program, and they give us to possibility to analyze and transform the code. That is basically what uh, we are trying to do with these tools. Um, let's take for instance again the um, the compilation process. You can see here the how well, I, I don't need to tell you about this, but you can see here the uh, source language that uh, goes through the lexical analysis, syntax analysis, then semantic analysis, and then it's turned to an intermediate representation to which is applied by the backend optimization before generating the code. And that's the point uh, in which I'm working basically the optimization phase on the intermediate representation of the code. <coughs> and that's where my tool, the slicer, uh, acts. Uh, first of all, yeah, uh, I don't know if you are all familiar with the concept of bit slicing. Uh, historically, it, um, yeah, bit slicing is a term that was used to uh, refer to the practice of um, building a, a processor of a, with a word of certain length by using processor with shorter words uh, uh, in, in parallel, let's say. So I could uh, build a n-bit processor by using n one-bit processor working in parallel. Um, in, uh, in software instead, uh, this concept uh, uh, implies uh, dedicating, a, let's say, a virtual register, so in our case, uh, at least a byte to each bit of the original data. And uh, um, in a, let's say, an orthogonal representation of the data that I will explain to you in a while, and of course, this implies also that uh, all operations performed on this data have to be orthogonalized as well. What do I mean by orthogonalization? Uh, here you can see uh, on the left uh, the array that we mean to be slice. And on the right, uh, I uh, put it uh, vertically just to give you a better idea what uh, this process is, is about. Uh, you see that uh, I put uh, the, each bit from the, that uh, array in the, <clears throat> the first place of each byte of a new array. So there has been an expansion uh, of the space used by, uh, by the process and uh, um, a division of the, uh, of the bits um, <clears throat> for which was allocated one element per, per each, I mean. Um, okay, and why is this necessary? In what fields? Uh, in cryptography, for instance, this kind of um, practice uh, lets uh, the programmer uh, more easily create uh, a constant time execution regardless of the input. What does it mean? Um, let's imagine, for instance, uh, block ciphers. Uh, I think we are all familiar with the block ciphers anyway. Um, and uh, uh, let's take into account uh, all the operations that perform on the input. Uh, in an encryption scheme, it's a key feature that uh, the execution time of the encryption does not depend at all on what is the input. But if we were able to uh, transform these operations into um, atomic Boolean operations, we are more sure that uh, there's no more this dependency because, um, as you may know, uh, the, uh, an atomic Boolean operation, uh, according to, uh, to um, well, about uh, execution time, it does not depend on, on the input. I mean, uh, the execution time of an atomic, or an atomic Boolean operation does not depend on what is the input. So uh, if we manage to visualize the data and then uh, besides also the algorithm applied to this data, we should uh, reach an, um, a constant time execution uh, that does not depend on what is the input, so what is the secret we are trying to, uh, to encrypt. And moreover, it's, uh, this technique uh, particularly suits cryptography because, uh, and block ciphers above all, because uh, as you have seen before here, we are allocated <coughs> some space that uh, may be unused. All the, uh, I'm talking about all the bits that I'm not using in the uh, array on, on the right that can be used 
uh, in, a, in a block cipher to, to host um, other chunks of plain text taken um, just uh, all in parallel and uh, compacted in a new version of the data. And since uh, block ciphers uh, perform the same operation on each block of input uh, they, they take, uh, we can, uh, once we visualize also the algorithm and we obtain this uh, atomic wooden operation, we can per perform these operations on all the bit of, uh, of one slice. Uh, by slice, I mean uh, uh, one of these elements, that is the, the set of the bits coming from the same position from each block uh, that was an input. So uh, here was a brief explanation of what uh, of cipher is just in case anyone is not uh, familiar with that, uh, we're talking about so, um, a deterministic and invertible transformation of a fixed length group of bits. Um, that's what left us uh, adopt a technique such as uh, this technique of uh, using more blocks in parallel and uh, since it is deterministic, apply, uh, apply the same operation on all the blocks uh, that we are processing. Um, <clears throat> Here I put a couple of examples of uh, orthogonalized uh, algorithm. Um, well, if then anyone is interested in getting this, this slide, there will be these links. Anyway, the first example, uh, using a slice version of, the, of an algorithm of, um, to encrypt the data, to introduce some uh, uh, redundant bits to make the code stronger against the fault, fault attacks. Uh, while the second example, is uh, about um, let's say a constant time uh, version of the AES algorithm and uh, takes into account also the increased efficiency uh, brought by uh, um, processing more, let's say more, um, more input at a time. Okay, so yeah. But uh, yeah, this slicing may sound appealing but uh, it's not uh, so, well, a widespread technique because it's quite niche. I mean, uh, as you have seen, um, it implies uh, an increase of allocated data, uh, of allocated space, sorry. And also an increase of the code used because uh, you need to manage all the slices and all uh, the, the relocation of the bits. But also, uh, it requires the algorithm to be suitable to be uh, orthogonalized, let's say. Not all, all algorithms are uh, suitable for this purpose. Uh, think, for instance, about a block cipher that just performs bitwise operation of the input. Bitwise operations are really easy to be to orthogonalize because you just need to perform the same operation on each bit uh, instead of each byte as it was in, in the original uh, version. But uh, if, for instance, uh, there are more complex permutations, uh, well, things become um, become a little trickier, let's say. But uh, if uh, uh, this is your case, your ideal case, and uh, um, you think that your algorithm can be uh, efficiently orthogonalized, then you may consider uh, using a tool like the, the Bislicer that, uh, uh, once it be uh, implemented as a prototype, uh, will provide some tools to annotate, for instance, some of the parts of the code that the programmer wants to be Bislicer. And then um, <clears throat> uh, we'll do the dirty work of bit slicing this data, so orthogonalizing the data and consequently the, the algorithm itself, without the need from the programmer uh, of uh, managing this uh, bit slice format of the of the algorithm. So here, for example, let's see how a programmer would like to um, to encrypt his function. If, for instance, I just encrypted my sorry, implemented my uh, function to encrypt uh, data, uh, I would like to, to uh, make the, um, the, the tool, make the compiler actually be slice it, so I just need to add an attribute to the definition of the function, and then the, the, the compiler would uh, do the, the dirty work. Let's see. Here is an example of what kind of transformation I mean. Uh, on the top, you can see uh, a simple XOR operation between um, all the, the, the blocks of the, of the plain text in input and the corresponding keys. Um, uh, possible uh, organization of this 
of this practice would be to, uh, of course, to perform the same sort of operation, but uh, by taking each time a different slice uh, of the bit slice version of the, of the plain text. That is, basically, uh, instead of applying the XOR operation at each, between each element of the plain text and each element of the key, you just apply uh, the, the, that operation to uh, between each slice of the bit slice plain text and each slice of the bit, bit slice key. That basically um, balances the loss of uh, efficiency. Uh, one other idea I had about this tool is that uh, um, is to, to leave the, the freedom uh, to the programmer to to manage uh, uh, the bit-slice data, but how? Since our aim is to make life easier to programmers. Um, for instance, the bit-slice could uh, bit-slice the, the the data, the needed data, and then provide the user with um, some tools such as this function to access the slices because uh, the access to the slices is the key point uh, in the. Uh, in cryptography or in this kind of uh, situation in which we have bit-slice data. And uh, bit-slicer would keep consistency also with uh, uh, not bit-slice, uh, not bit-wise accesses, sorry. And that is basically what I mean. Let's uh, suppose, for instance, that uh, uh, we are assigning a not bit-slice value, if uh, you understand what I mean, to uh, the plain text that uh, uh, we are told the, the compiler to, to be slice. Uh, so basically, the user just needs to uh, do what, what, uh, what he needs. And then the be slicer uh, detects this uh, assignment of a not be slice uh, variable or value to uh, a be slice value. And so it just uh, um, be slices temporarily the value and stores it uh, uh, at the um, corresponding location. In this example, you see that uh, um, the assignment um, uh, regards the second, uh, the second block, according to this, uh, sorry, to this example, sorry, the third, let's say the third block, the input, uh, and the first element. So, as you can see here, um, the, the bits of the value are put uh, at the third position because uh, they are uh, about the the third block in input. Uh, on the other hand, if uh, a programmer wants to, to, to assign a, a bit slice value to um, not a not bit slice uh, variable, of course, um, the bit slice will detect this and uh, uh, rebuild the, um, the value stored as a bit slice value just to be able to insert it in, the, in that instruction. These are quite simple examples of more complex operation, of course. Uh, but basically, that's how the bit-slicer could keep consistency with all other parts of the algorithm that uh, uh, a user that is act actively uh, using the slices wouldn't expect to, to have to do with. All right, so some other developments uh, of the secure project involved the introduction of some warnings, um, that's um, warnings based on uh, um, on a proper analysis of the code, and that um, aim at uh, revealing some bad practices, such as the one we've seen before, uh, such as using a, a variable that is related to some secrets in a uh, in a construct that controls the flow, the execution flow. So, in such a situation the compiler would detect the presence of that variable in that, uh, in that condition and uh, um, emit this kind of warning. Uh, as you can see here, we have uh, also annotated the, the variable with a critical attribute, just to let the compiler uh, keep track of this variable and also about all other variables addressing it, such as a pointer, by spreading uh, the, the attribute through the instructions. And then uh, uh, so emit a, a warning whenever this uh, this uh, variable is used in a not a proper place. I mean, 
And uh, another um, aim of this project in the future will be the so-called stack arrays, that is the deletion, the, so, the, uh, so arrays in sensible data left in the stack. What do I mean? Um, let's think, for, for instance, about some functions that are managing some secrets and uh, put the secrets in the stack then the function returns, but uh, if those secrets, uh, uh, so I'm talking about the, the, this word in, in, the, in the stack, the dead beef. Uh, since this secret has been put in the stack, it could be possible, and again with the proper usage of, of, uh, of pointers, uh, to, to recover it. So just to be sure that this doesn't happen, I would like the, the stack to be erased once this uh, kind of function that uh, should, should be marked properly uh, returns in order to avoid you know, uh, any attacker from uh, recovering this data. So yeah, basically this is, uh, this is my work at the moment. It's still at, a, quite a, at an early stage, so I'm really open to any uh, piece of advice you'd like to give, but also to any question uh, that I'll try to answer, of course.